Hi there, Michael Burnett, AF7KB, the Fast Track Ham License Guy here, and uh, we're going to talk about wavelength. You won't talk radio with a ham for long before you'll hear some kind of sentence along the lines of, I always have my two-meter radio with me, or, man, 20 meters was wide open last night. What are they talking about? What is all this meter jazz? Every radio signal has a particular frequency. For now, think of it as where the signal is on the radio dial, or the number that appears on the digital readout when you tune in your favorite commercial station. Hams can only operate on certain ranges of radio frequencies. Each range is called a band. For instance, there's the 2-meter band that stretches from 144 to 148 megahertz. The bands cover a wide range of portions of the spectrum. The most commonly used bands include frequencies from 1.8 megahertz, 1.8 million cycles per second, clear up to 450 megahertz. Each of those groups of frequencies has its own unique characteristics and has different equipment requirements, especially in the area of antennas. We can describe a radio wave by its frequency or by its wavelength. In the end, both words are describing the same thing. Hams like using wavelength because those characteristics and requirements relate more directly to the wavelength than to the frequency, so we'd better sort out this wavelength business. We measure wavelength in the metric system. Why? Because science! Here's an antenna. I've made it an expensive, fancy one that can operate on different bands. We'll say this one operates on the 2-meter band, that one that goes from 144 to 148 megahertz, and it can also operate on the 70-centimeter band that runs from 420 to 450 megahertz. If we use this antenna to send a signal at, say, 146.660 MHz on the 2-meter band, that means that 146,660,000 times a second, that antenna is going to send out one electromagnetic wave consisting of a positive pulse of energy and a negative pulse of energy. Each wave is going to take off at the speed of light and keep traveling at that speed forever. That wave has a physical size that's not going to change. There's going to be a fixed physical distance between the positive peaks, and that's the wavelength of the signal. In this case, that's going to be approximately 2 meters. If we switch frequencies to the 70-centimeter band, say we switch to 440.0 megahertz, now there are three times as many waves coming out of the antenna in the same amount of time. They're still traveling at exactly the same speed as that 2-meter signal, but now the distance between the positive peaks, this signal's wavelength is one-third as long. You can see that as frequency gets higher, the wavelength gets shorter. The most used ham radio frequencies range in wavelength from 160 meters, a football field, and another two-thirds of a football field, to those 70-centimeter signals that have a wavelength of about 26 inches. There are three main areas where wavelength is very significant. One is propagation, basically where our signal is going to go after it leaves our antenna. In general, that's an important disclaimer there, in general, longer waves are for longer distance communication, shorter waves for shorter distances. From Two meters and shorter wavelengths up, under ordinary circumstances, 
we're limited to line-of-sight waves. Short distances over flat ground, no problem. Long distances from mountaintop to mountaintop, no problem. Even mountaintop to flat land or flat land to mountaintop, still no problem. Flat land to the other side of a mountain, or even very far over the horizon? Yeah, that's usually not happening. Far above the Earth, from about 50 to 350 miles up, is a layer of charged particles called the ionosphere. And some radio waves can get reflected by that, sometimes. But not the two-meter and shorter VHF and UHF waves. Those waves generally shoot right through the ionosphere. The six-meter band, a little lower frequency, is something of an in-between band. It has its moments when it can work long distances off of the ionosphere. Lots of technician class hams get their first experiences with long-distance communications on the six-meter band. Depending mostly on the weather on the sun, the HF, high-frequency bands from 80 through 10 meters, can bounce off the ionosphere and create what we call a sky wave. That wave can bounce off the surface of the Earth and back up to the ionosphere even several times, creating global communication. Very long waves, at least for us, very long. Those 160-meter waves that are in the medium-frequency range can also sometimes bounce off the ionosphere, and those waves are so low in frequency that they can actually follow the curvature of the Earth for quite some distance, creating what we call a ground wave. In the section of the book on propagation, you'll learn there are exceptions to many of those rules of thumb. As I say, that's a very general picture. Another area where wavelength is very meaningful is in antennas. Again, a disclaimer. Very generally speaking, the rule is an antenna must be one-half wavelength long to function. And yes, that means a 160-meter antenna needs to be 80 meters long, about 260 feet. Now, before you process that and then throw up your hands and give up ham radio to take up pottery making, let me quickly add that that 160-meter antenna has to be electrically 80 meters long. And there is a lot of clever electronic trickery available to take advantage of that one extra word. And finally, the characteristics of those various wavelengths even affect the operating procedures on that band. On HF bands, for instance, operators use a lot of abbreviations like CQ and QSL to keep communications working in the face of weak signals and sometimes lots of interference. On the 2-meter and 70-centimeter bands, things are much more conversational and casual. You can see that for hams, wavelengths have a lot of meaning. And hopefully they have a little more meaning for you now, too. Okay, that's it. Keep learning and find more learning resources in the Fast Track books and audio courses on FastTrackHam.com and on our Facebook page. 73 AF7KB Clear.